John answered Jesus saying, teacher, we saw one, someone who does not follow us. Now, maybe that includes Jesus, right? But it sounds like, um, it doesn't say he doesn't follow you. He doesn't follow us <clears throat> who, by the way, have been given power to cast out demons um, in a very specific way named apostles. So they, they definitely have had that happen. That's the other thing that's right before this is he's, there's a big fight about authority. Who's the greatest? Yeah, it's right before this. Um, uh, and uh, John answered, you know, we found someone who doesn't follow us casting out demons in your name. So he's not trying to. He's actually doing it. Doing it. Mm -hmm. And we forbade him because he does not follow us. Now, there's a point at which you can kind of get it. John's all about order at this point, right? He's all about the institution. He's all about coloring inside the lines. And there's no question, it's a little strange that this one guy is just like, I'm going to do it. But Jesus said, do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterward speak evil of me. What about all those false teachers working miracles on TV? Well, maybe they're not really working miracles, you know. So, so that could be a big part of it. But here's the line, 40. He who is not against us, that also could be you, some of the old manuscripts that he is not against you is for you, is on your side, is on our side. He who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ, assuredly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Now, don't miss what he says next. And it's not disconnected. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble. Who are the little ones? Well, it can refer to children, but it also can just be referring to Christians. So here's this Christian doing his best to be a Christian. They come along like, stop it. You're not allowed to do it that way. And like, well, that might cause him to stumble, right? And don't mess. The other side of it is, what if he is the one causing people to stumble? Well, then it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck. He'll be thrown into the sea. Like it, and this is the kind of the question. Is it your job to punish evildoers? No. Not really. I mean, there are vocations where the police, right? But but generally, is it your job to go around and police everybody? No. In fact, you are to know that if someone's a false teacher, certainly call it out in your own heart. But like, do you have to go stop them physically? No, you can know that he's actually building up a reward for himself that's quite terrible. And you could even sing hallelujah about that because what we're going to do in the last day. Mm -hmm. And if your hand causes you to sing, cut it off. Better for you to end a life maimed than having two hands to go into the hell of fire where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So, okay, but here, here's the thing about this. I said tension. I said two things that give you the whole truth. If you go to Luke chapter 11, you find Jesus saying the exact opposite. And this gives people a little trouble. It, you know, we, we, we engineers like our buildings to be only with one rule. Right? We want it all to be exactly the same. And the thing about wisdom is often, again, it's, it's between two poles. It's between two poles. Uh, and and the, the truth is both and not either or. Okay? So um, notice the connection also has demons involved. We're still in the context of demons. Jesus was casting out a demon and it was mute. Verse 14 in, in chapter 11. Uh, so it was when the demon had come out, the mute spoke and the multitude marveled. But some of them says he's doing this by, by the devil, right? Jesus has the devil inside of him. Others testing him are seeking for a sign from heaven. He knows their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and a house divided against a house falls. If Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by, by Satan. And, and if I cast out demons by Satan, you know, by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they, your sons, will be their, your judges. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. I love that. So good. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. That's the devil again. But when a str one stronger than he comes, that's Jesus, and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. He who is not with me, this is what we're looking for, is against me. And he who does not gather, scatters. So, if you're not for Jesus, you're against Jesus. If you're not against Jesus, you're for Jesus, right? Where's the middle here? You have a Christian in Mark chapter 9 who may have taken on more authority than he was given by anyone who saw it happen, but who clearly has been allowed by the Holy Spirit to have the authority to cast out demons. Mm -hmm. 
And so he's he's speaking good about Jesus. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. Did he have all his dogma correct? Probably not. Who knows? It wasn't, they were still in the midst of all of it taking place. There's no New Testament written. He's only got the old. Uh, but is he against Jesus? No, he's for Jesus. Well, then good. You know, don't stop him. Maybe uh, well, Apollos. Apollos is a good example here. Apollos goes about preaching. He's converting people. People like listen to him. He trusts that the Bible is true in the Old Testament, but he says some stuff and he's a little more like boundaries with God, right? He's like, ah, oh, it's a little bit off there, a little bit off. And and so what do Priscilla and Achilles do? They stop him? No, they come alongside of him mm-hmm. and they gently instruct him privately so as not to embarrass him, right? About a, a better way of looking at it. And so this is kind of, I think the point of Mark is they were like, we stopped him. He's like, don't. Bring him along. You know, he's not against me. But that doesn't mean everyone just go do whatever you want. Because the fact is, if you're not for Jesus, you are against Jesus. Right? And if you're going to say that Jesus way is wrong and this, you know, anyone can do whatever they want. And it's it, uh, it goes, Jesus says, this is right. You say, well, that's wrong. I'm going to live this way. But I'm for Jesus. You're not. You're a liar then. Right. So it's not a caveat that allows false teaching to exist. It's a recognition that all of us are in a walk of repentance and that to to, to uh, smush out the, the to put out this, I can't get the word, the, the flickering wick. There we go. Uh, to take the wick that is lightly flickering and scrunch it. No, stop it. Um, that is, that's going to quench faith. Mm-hmm. So if he's actually speaking in the name of Jesus, he's at least speaking in the name of Jesus. 